Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I don't know when you clicked on this, it's YouTube, could be any time. There will now follow a review of the brand new for 2017 Kawasaki Z900. And then we'll meet back here afterwards where I can give you a proper roundup and explain my findings and we can discuss how it sits in comparison to its rivals. Enjoy. Just casually drinking a coffee. That is hot as the sun. Hello. Time to take you on a test ride, I think. Brand new year, new bike, 2017 Kawasaki Z900. Time to see how fast it is. Spoiler alert, it's very fast. Yeah, nice and quick. Oh, my life. God, that's got some punch to it. Well, doesn't that just take your breath away? Oh, man, alive! You know, probably not the best road to be trying anything on, but we'll see. Look at me, I'm hiding, I'm camouflaged, it's green. Well, black and green. You stay there. I'm gonna come in handy. So let's have a look at the instrument cluster. So you've got your lights, you've got your hazards, you've got your indicators horn. You've got your pass light, of course. Uh, you have an assisted clutch, which is useful. You have the kill switch, ignition. That is it. You have some brakes, which are linked down to the front there to those four piston Nissans, which are very good, actually. Very capable. So far, I'd say that the brakes are a little disproportionate. The front is very good. And the back, I would want more from. Again, that's Nissan. It's one pop. You've got 250mm disc, and on the front, 300mm. The exhaust is quiet, but then it's Euro 4 compliant, so you'd expect that. The airbox, although it's supposed to be really aggressive and really loud, could be louder, I didn't hear a lot of it. It's got quite a nice note to it for a four-cylinder. As far as the dash goes, what you're looking at is a digital display, not colour. And then you've got your rev range up here. This is where it gets fun. That number right there is where you want to aim for, but you won't be looking at that because you'll be too busy concentrating on the road and whatever you're shooting towards. ABS, as standard, again, Euro 4 compliance, that is a benefit. Uh, you've got a cabled throttle as well, it's not ride-by-wire because you haven't got those rider modes, there's no real electronic interference, which usually would be a little bit snappy, but actually it's pretty good on this. You've got the front forks there, 41mm, adjustable for preload and for turn that off adjustable for preload and adjustable for rebound damping same is true on the back with the rear shock and obviously it is horizontally mounted looks good though you got a steel trellis frame cuts down on weight you have this little exhaust here which you'll probably want to change for an Akropovic or a Pro Akropovic which is apparently how you say it. Please do tell me if I'm saying it wrong. I don't suppose you can type the pronunciation, or at least you could type it phonetically, but I probably wouldn't be able to read it, so I'll leave it there. Oh yeah, look at this. Look at this cute little thing here. I'm gonna turn it on again. I'm probably draining the battery, but we'll give it another go. Oh, sorry, can you pick me up? I broke down, because I was playing around with the light. How cute is that? Probably not reading in daytime, but at nighttime, that makes a cute little Z. Because this is a Z900. Now, in order to give you a proper review, I need to get back out and test it again. Which means swinging a leg back over, 
Optimus Lime and get them back on the road. Any extra facts I can think of? Service intervals, 4,000 miles, pretty standard. Uh, first one I believe is 600 miles. Oh, one thing I did note. See that tank? Now I said she looks like a big girl to the dealer. And he was like, oh, she's not. She's nice and light. And she is nice and light, actually, when you get on. She, he, whatever you want to call it. But because this tank is so fat, it does kind of stretch your legs out a little bit. A little bit like you're waiting for a certain kind of procedure. I can only imagine that riding this thing for a long time will improve your pelvic floor muscles. So there we go. Kawasaki, thinking of things you didn't even know you needed to think about. I guess the term would be akimbo. Your legs are fully spread. Spread eagle. But at least it means that you're practically always in contact with it and you can really feel it. I don't know about tyres, but I have been told that the Dunlops aren't very good. I will say no more on that because that would just be me regurgitating somebody else's information. I haven't looked into tyres. Although I do like that little lime detail around the wheel. You've got obviously this beautiful little trellis frame poking through, which means it's nice and light. It is 210 kilograms. It has a seat height of 795, according to Kawasaki, but other people have said 794 mil. That means that it is nice and small, and you can very easily get your leg over it. Uh, you have actually got, as well, really nice back support. I'm not sure what that would be like to sit on as a passenger, but because it is quite a quick bike, having that to press your ass against is nice and useful. And then, of course, most importantly, we have 123 brake horsepower and 72 foot-pounds of torque, or 98 newton meters if you prefer it in newton meters, which I don't, so we're going to go with foot-pounds. And it is fun to play, as I've already mentioned, about there, at 7,000 revs. Obviously, we're going to put it in its rider mode. There we go, we've done the rider modes. <laughs> uh, I do like the fact that it's got no rider modes, I have to say. Obviously that is a, a benefit and a burden because for £8,249, um, well, you can get more for your money, to put it bluntly. But if you don't really want rider modes or need them, and you don't really, then you won't worry. What I would say though, is that rider modes benefit you when you're in a town where you're going to be doing a lot of different riding especially for a town for me, and I'm reviewing it more, more as a town rider than anything else if you have rider modes then that essentially means that when you're going over imperfections in the road surface you're not snapping the throttle the whole time like that and because this has got a cable throttle and not an electric Basically, it's just going to read everything you put through with your fingers. So there's nothing to meter that out. But hey, there are bigger problems. As far as taste goes, you are quite far over. And it does spread your legs a bit too much. When I say you're riding a Kimbo, I really, really mean you're riding a Kimbo. But at least that forces you to hug the tank with your knees. You're quite far over the handlebars as well. And that means that it, it drops in and steers so quickly. It's so responsive on the steering and so light as well. Apparently all of the weight is nice and centralised. Now they've done that a little bit from the rear shock and its position because it is that horizontal rear shock instead. That's centralised the weight a little bit. Oh, slipper clutch doing better than I am. My gear changes are a bit shit. Luckily, there is a slipper clutch to make up for my errors, which are probably plentiful. Get some! that exhaust no we found it Woo! 
I don't know, the rear's not bad actually. Said it wasn't very good, maybe you just need to stamp on it a bit more. Those fronts though, woof. I reckon I'm at 40 by the end of that hash mark. Hey, I am! <laughs> I really do need to pick a floor though, don't I? The rear brake could be better, but it's not bad. I mean, the street triples only usually use one piston on the back. The front brakes are very quick to respond. You get a lot of feedback through there. So that's not really a flaw, and we're looking at floors. And the big one is just price. And then the floor for me really is styling, I just don't like it. I'm not a massive fan of the instrument cluster, uh, not the instrument cluster, the dash. I don't like this display so much. It's, it's very basic, you can't change anything on that. There's nothing with fuel. That's actually, that would bug me I think and that will be an issue. If you don't keep an eye on that, then your fuel gauge will run to empty and it will be blinking away whilst you are not watching because it's not colour. If you haven't got a light that comes on, well, you can very easily miss it. I've definitely been sat in traffic thinking I'm going to get 120 miles from mine and only at 100 and the yellow light starts blinking and then I know I've got that 20 mile buffer to go and fill up. If it's just that that actually flashes and blinks, then I'd miss that and I would run the risk of running out of fuel. Which I've only ever done once before, but it wasn't fun. Very tame. Oh, fine, fuck you. If you're not going to nod at me, I mean, come on. We're both on bikes, you know the rule. <laughs> I've noticed people are nodding a lot less now in London. You might think it's unnecessary. I personally don't think it's unnecessary. I want a nod. I want to give you a nod, I want you to give me a nod. The gears are nice and quick. Yeah. I guess that could be another flaw for you. If you don't like chopping through gears at a rate of knots, then that could become a bit irritating. Maybe you want to hold on to it longer. It being a four cylinder, you do need to have quite short gears to get the torquey punch that you'd expect from the likes of a twin I'll keep going the likes of a twin or the likes of a three cylinder so quick to drop in so grippy I've been on very few bikes with such a quick turning circle on the front where you're so over the bars. They're quite low as well so you've got great leverage over them. But I think you will agree with me that you will, you will be happy with it. If you buy it, you will be happy with this bike. And wish this baby Yeah, a good sales quota for 2017. Tatty bye bye. Gorgeous. Did you get all that? Did you get all that? Now then, important facts, right? Got my laptop here, which obviously you can't see, but I'm gonna be referencing it and looking at it. So apologies for not giving you direct eye contact, but I can't click on this and look at you and drink coffee. I'm not very good at multitasking. That took all of my concentration. Now onto the computer. What we have then are some things up here. So obviously, as far as where it fits for the category, middleweight naked, so it will be coming up against other middleweight naked. We have the Suzuki GSX 750, which obviously is a smaller motor. So if you compare that to the Kawasaki, then it's a little bit heavier, it's a little bit less powerful, so it probably translates when you want it to it feeling less quick but and here's the big but it's 7,599 pounds so it is cheaper if you want to save your money not a bad way to go but 
Something else you should note is that this actually does come with more electronic trickery, so you do get a few more bells and whistles for your money. The most obvious comparison is the MT-09 because it is a 900, it is also from Japan, it even looks relatively similar. But that comes in at, wait for it, wait for it, well actually I know, £7,799. Now then, it is again slightly less powerful, uh, but it is lighter. But I think the most important thing to note that you get with the Yamaha for that lower price point is you actually get your rider modes, your traction control, your ABS, all of those things, which again, completely up to you. Maybe you'd prefer without it. I just know that if I was spending my money, first and foremost, the fact that I'm saving about 500 pounds is very beneficial to me and really appealing to me. And second of all, because I know I'm actually getting more for my money, arguably, as far as technology goes, I'd probably side with the Yamaha, but that is only my preference. That's completely devoid. Maybe you have your own opinions on that. And maybe you prefer a bike that just goes. There's less to go wrong with it, so that is a benefit if you're looking at the Kawasaki. And then I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the Street Triple, the new 765cc Street Triple. Again, smaller capacity, less powerful, lighter though. That's really it. In a nutshell, it's a fantastic bike. Compared only on its own merits, it's brilliant. It really is. And I know, obviously, I haven't ridden big 1200cc bikes, so the speed is relative. To me, it is a very quick bike. 123 brake horsepower is very fast. It's also really responsive, and for a four-cylinder, very, very torquey. Really usable. It's also got that really short gearbox, so you can snick through gears really quickly which is great, but it does goad you a little bit into being a bit of a hooligan. Just be sensible with it. Obviously, that relates to you. You know, maybe you will be sensible with it, maybe you won't be, but if you're not going to be sensible, you probably won't be sensible on a lot of bikes. It's just that this one can really tempt you into pushing the limits on roads that you probably shouldn't. But real world, if you compare it to other bikes, it is the most expensive out of those three that I've compared. If you're looking at more expensive bikes, you're looking at maybe a 1,000cc and... This isn't really far off that. It sort of should be compared between your big muscle nakeds, your muscly nakeds, your 1000cc, you know, Ducatis and BMWs and even, you know, your Suzukis and Kawasaki's because you can get the Z1000. So it, it kind of plays around that mark because it is so powerful and so much bigger than its rivals. But it is more expensive than its rivals as well. And as I say, and I keep reiterating, you do get more bells and whistles more for your money with the other bikes. Maybe you'll never use those things. Maybe you're not the kind of person that likes them. And I think that's the most important thing. You need to work out whether you want the most technologically advanced bike out there, or you really like mechanical nuts and bolts, just start up and go bike. If you like your older feel and more mechanical feel, then I would say this is the bike for you. Is it ugly? Yes. Is it fast? Yes. That's pretty much all you need. You can stop the video now, basically. Here's what it is in two words. Ugly and fast. It's ugly fast. Fugly. No, that's like fuck ugly, isn't it? It's not fugly. Hey, well, it is fugly, but it's also fast, and that doesn't get the fast. It's a minger, but it goes quickly.